One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Sit your bottoms on the floor. Sit your bottoms on the floor. Five and six and seven and eight. Five and six and seven and eight. Hands in your laps and sit up straight. Hands in your laps and sit up straight. One, two. One, two. Three, four. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four. One, two. Three, four. In today's message, I wanted to uh, give you guys some words that we're going to be seeing in today's message. And I'm going to ask someone to come up and point out the word have for me. And we're going to movie star kiss that word have, okay? Can you come up, Shamira, and point to the word have? Everybody see that? So that's the word that we're going to movie star kiss. Thank you, Shamira. Are you ready? H A V E have. Okay, Jayliani, could you grab this? And we're going to movie star kiss the word you. Everybody see that word you? We're going to movie star kiss that one. Thank you, Jayliani. Ready? Go. Okay, so these are our high frequency words. You're going to see those in my message today, okay? Two other words that you're going to see in our message that you might not know what they mean or what they say are right here. The first one is petrified. Can everybody say that word for me? Petrified. Petrified means to be scared of something. Scared, okay? Another word is departed. Can you say that for me? Departed. Okay, departed means to leave, okay? All right, so look for those words in our message. When I was thinking about what I wanted to write for you guys today, I wanted to reference a book that we read recently, Claudette. Now, in Claudette, we saw that the author used a lot of juicy temporal words. Now, we use temporal words such as first, next, and last in our writing, but we want to take it a step further, okay? Because as writers, sometimes we look to other authors to show us how we can do that. So one of the things that the author of Claudette did was instead of using the simple uh, temporal words, he used words such as once in a while, on this page, he has once in a while. He also used pretty soon. So these are temporal words that show time passing that are juicier than the usual ones we use. So I'm going to be writing about a picnic that I did this weekend that I went on with my little brother. And in my message, you're going to see some juicy temporal words. So can you guys be on a lookout for those? Okay. So let's get started. I want really nice, strong voices when I'm writing my message. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Stop and I have to come over here because I ran out of space. Okay, that's the end of my sentence. So we're going to reread this. Over the weekend, I had a picnic. Very nice. have a TH. What does the TH sound make? Very good. I'm at the end of my line again. What's this say? I was Here's that word. Go ahead. We're going to reread this message, okay? Over the weekend, I had a picnic. Suddenly, I heard thunder, and I was petrified. Petrified? It is my brain. I shouted, let's pack up. Ready? Very nice. 
nice reading. All right, Shamira, could you come up here, please? I'm going to need you to find something that you know. It can be a letter, it can be a punctuation mark, or it can be a word. Okay? So can you take your pointer and can you find something for us? We can. Okay. So tell everybody what you found, the word you found. I found the word weekend. Okay, very good. Shamira found the word weekend. And weekend is actually a special word, and we talked about that before. Do you know what it's called when you have two words that we put together to make a new word? A compound word. Very good. So what are our two words that we had to make this word? Week and... Very good. Because it's the end of the week, so it's the weekend. Okay? So I'm going to box these two words just so you can see the two different ones. Okay? Can you think of any more compound words? On the top of your head, could you think of anything? Any other compound words? There's actually another compound word in this message. Would you be able to find it for us? Okay, so, all right. Every, tell everybody the word you found. I found the word thunder. Okay, so Shamira found the word thunder, and Shamira said that this is a compound word, but it actually isn't, okay? A compound word is when you take two separate words and put them together to make a new word. Thunder is just one word on its own, okay? Okay, Shamira, I'm gonna come down to this word. This is the word indoors. Could you tell me if this is a compound word or not? It's a compound word because it has two words. Very good, so it has two words. What are the two words? In. Very good, so here's in. Yours. Very good. And here's our other word. Good job. So, Shamira, I'm going to point to this word. Do you know what this word is? Being. Very good. Now, is this a compound word? No. It is not. Good job. Why isn't it a compound word? Because it's only one word. Very good. And when we have one word, we don't consider that a compound word. Thank you, Shamira. You may have a seat. Okay, Jess Marie, I'm going to have you come up, please. Can you take this and can you point out something that you know you're going to stay on the red square? Can you point out something that you know? Can you tell everybody what you found? Head. Say, I found the word. I found the word head. Now point at it. Okay, very good. So boys and girls, Jess Marie found the word head. Good job. Jess Marie, can you tell me what vowel is in the word head? What is our vowel? H. Okay. No. H isn't a vowel, okay? H is actually a, something that we call a consonant, okay? And that's a big word, but what I want to talk about is our vowels. Vowels are, do you guys know what our vowels are? Can you say them for me? A-E-I-O-U. Very good. Okay, so the vowels that we're going to talk about today are A, E, I, O, and U. So do you see any vowel down here that we have in our word up here? What letter is that? A. It is an A. And do you know what a short vowel A sound is? A. Very good. So can you say this word together? Had. Had. Very good. And it does make that short A sound. So can you think of any other words that have the short vowel A? What about this one? What does that say? Cat. Very good. Can you think of any other one besides cat? It's in this word family. Can you think of anything else? If we change this one letter to something else? Can. Okay. Very good. Anything else? Dad. Very good. So all of these words have that short A sound, right? So what does the short A sound make again? Yeah. Very good. Is H a vowel? No. No, it's not. Okay. But is A a vowel? Yes. And what is our short vowel A sound again? Yeah. Very good. Okay, so boys and girls, in my message today, I included a lot of juicy temporal phrases. Instead of the normal ones like first, next, last, and finally, I used juicier ones to make my writing more exciting. For example, here's one that I have over the weekend that just lets you know that time has passed or when it happened. So what I want you to do is I want you to turn and talk to your partner and I want you to see if you can pick out any other of those 
juicy temporal phrases for me, okay? So nicely turn and talk to your partner. You can do a threesome. Go ahead. See if you can look into my message and pick out any of the other temporal phrases, okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Can you pick out anything? Can you think of anyone that you see? What do you think? Okay, so that's a good one. So tell your partner that that is definitely showing a juicy temporal phrase. Good job. Can you think of any other one, Harm? So I hope that you were able to pick out some of the other phrases that show when something has taken place. There was a nice one that you picked out. Could you tell me what you picked out? It is somewhere right here. What did you say? Pretty soon, okay? That's another one. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna build an anchor chart that is going to be used doing, during our writer's workshop to help us make our writing more exciting to read. We're gonna call our anchor chart our juicy temporal words and phrases, okay? So can you repeat that? Our juicy temporal words and phrases. Okay, so what's actually gonna happen is I actually have some sentence strips already uh, written on and you're going to give me a thumbs up if it's something that is juicy and it's showing a temporal phrase and if it isn't you're going to give me a thumbs down okay and we're going to build that chart so you can use it during your writer's workshop when you are making your writing as juicy as possible and you're telling us a story okay because remember I don't want you just to use that first next then last finally those words we already use them we're going to take it a step further and we're going to make it a little bit more exciting okay okay so let's get started our first one that I'm going to have says once in a while can you guys repeat that so give me a thumbs up if it is a temporal phrase that shows passage of time or if it's not. So what do you think it is? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Good job. It's definitely a thumbs up. Once in a while definitely shows time passing, okay? It's a temporal phrase. So we're going to keep that there, okay? You have another one? Looked away. Can you repeat that? <coughs> what do you think? No, me either. I don't think this shows any time passing. So what I want you guys to remember is that when you are doing your writing, to try to be brave and add some of those juicy temporal phrases or words, okay? Okay, guys, so now we're ready for our final reread. We're going to read nice and strong. We're going to practice our fluency, and I want you guys to look at your punctuation marks so you know how you're supposed to sound when you're reading, okay? Ready? Oh. Very nice. Suddenly, I heard thunder, and I was petrified. It might rain. I shouted, let's pack up. Pretty soon, I and we finished eating indoors. Okay. Very good. Thank you, guys.